From the outside, the vice presidency might look to be one of the most esteemed positions in the country. Many who've held the office, however, have hated it, starting all the way back with the first vice president, John Adams. John Adams served as vice president to first president, George Washington. However, being vice president was not his initial intent. In the election of 1788, John Adams was one of the 11 candidates to run against Washington. Unlike current elections, each elector was allowed to cast a vote for two candidates. Whoever received the most votes became president, and second most, vice president. With 69 electoral votes, Washington received a vote from each elector, making his election unanimous. With their second vote, the electors were more split. But Adams received 34 of these votes and undisputedly took second place. The vice presidency was viewed as a sort of consolatory prize. Of course, if the president died in office, he would assume presidential responsibilities, but in his actual position, he had little to do. The main responsibility was to preside over Senate meetings. This meant they made sure discussions remained civil, allow members to speak, and interpret Senate rules. Also, in case of a tie in a Senate vote, the vice president cast a tie-breaking vote. But this is hardly what John Adams wanted. Adams was opinionated, ambitious, and disagreeable. In the Continental Congress, he was able to debate and speak his mind. Here, he was relegated to a moderator. And just days into his position, he was overstepping his bounds, inserting himself into the Senate debate over the president's title. Titles such as Highness and Protector of Their Liberties were preferred by Adams, who insisted the president have a prestigious title to command respect. For 40 minutes he harangued us from the chair, one senator wrote of Adams. Adams ultimately lost the battle, as the Senate settled on the more modest title, Mr. President. More importantly, however, Adams had created a bad name for himself as vice president. Many senators disliked him, earning him the derogatory title, his rotundity. Even President Washington was displeased upon learning of Adams' conduct. Adams conceded that he got off to a bad start, but nevertheless, he was open about his disdain for the position, saying it was, quote, not quite adapted to my character, too inactive and mechanical. For the remainder of his tenure, he resigned to his position as a moderator. In debates, he was inactive, though on 31 occasions he got the chance to exercise his duty as the tie-breaking vote. During his presidency, Washington would rarely consult Adams' advice. Consistently supportive of Washington and never doubting his character, Adams did, however, grow resentful. Not helping was that Adams suspected he was essentially cheated out of the presidential election of 1788. Alexander Hamilton had feared that Adams might actually tie Washington in electoral votes and encouraged many electors to cast votes for different candidates. Learning of this made Adams very bitter. He believed that many of his opponents were content to see him in such an inactive position. Of the vice presidency, he said it was, quote, a curse rather than a blessing. He also wrote, quote, My country has in its wisdom contrived for me the most insignificant office that ever the invention of man contrived or his imagination conceived. He'd even threatened to resign, but likely had no intention of actually doing so. The vice presidency was, in fact, the best stepping stone to the office he truly wanted, the presidency, which he would achieve after winning the election of 1796. Many of Adams' successors would have similar feelings towards their position. The vice presidency is not worth a bucket of warm piss. Over most of America's history, the vice president has been standby equipment. I would a great deal rather be anything, say a professor of history, than vice president. It is a damned peculiar situation to be in, to have authority and a title and responsibility with no real power to do anything. I think it is the hardest adjustment for a man to make. To support regular uploads from this channel, consider subscribing and donating to Resyndicate it on Patreon. Donations from $2 to $15 a month help towards more frequent uploads. Patreon link in the description below.